And uh, I want to introduce uh, four of the creative people who are involved with these shows you were just introduced to, uh, to take some of your questions. First of all, as you just saw on the stage, Steve Davison, executive for Parades and Spectaculars of Walt Disney Creative Entertainment. Steve? <laughs> Sarah Wiseman, who is the executive producer for World of Color Celebrate. John Addis, the show director for Disneyland Forever Fireworks. And Tracy Hallis, uh, the choreographer for Paint the Night. And I will open the floor for questions. Yes. Tell them generally, how long is the fireworks show? How long is the world's color? Time-wise? Yes. <laughs> it changes every day. <laughs> um, the fireworks will probably be anywhere... Oh. Okay, sorry. I can't talk anymore. Okay, um, fireworks right now, forever, is probably going to be 12 to 14 minutes, is where it's kind of landing. Uh, world of color will probably be 22 to 24 minutes. So about 10 minutes difference of the two. Yes. Oh, Well, I think, I mean, most of the shows for the 60th are based on the ideal that Disneyland will never be complete without imagination. And it's, it's a great quote by Walt. And we've really taken that to heart. I mean, that's where a lot of the shows have kind of developed from. And Bob Gurr, one of the legend imagineers, said to me once, after he saw World of Color, he goes, Walt Disney would love you. He goes, you really kind of think differently. And, and he would really kind of embrace this as something new and a way to tell stories in a different way. And that's what we encourage everybody to do on every one of the teams, is how do we take this idea of Disneyland, this beautiful world where we tell stories, and do it in different ways. You know, through fireworks, when we first started doing stories in the sky, I mean, it really kind of took off in a fun way. And same with World of Color. How do we take water? and start to develop it in that way. And even, you know, parades, how do we make them for today? How, immersive is a huge word for the 60th, and you'll hear me say it a lot. Immersive, 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 in every one of the experiences, as the gang will tell you. I mean, we really push for that. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> There's a question back there. Yeah. Uh, besides the inspiration of wealth and um, everything that you mentioned, Bring more, more magic to this event in California Adventure. Well, a lot of it is, is the stories. Uh, Walt was such a great storyteller, and through the years, the stories were always so magnificent. And what's great about Stephen when he's creating something, story is up there foremost. The innovations, the technology, everything else. But if it doesn't have that heart and the story, uh, it just... That's that's what we're striving for. So that there's there's a narrative that we all believe in, that everyone can understand, and that touches everybody's heart. Sarah, do you have anything you want to add to that? Since you work, I know, on the Celebrate uh, World of Color piece. I mean, I you know I'm like Stephen. You know, World of Color means is, is from the heart, honestly, and it was a labor of love for five years, and we have continued to grow it, build it, add new elements to it, and this is going to be a huge step. So this is a brand new World of Color show, and we're really excited. It's going to be very different. And um, yeah, I mean, and there's the stories, you know, when, when you have the chance actually to go back to the, you know, the beginning of the company, all the way to the, into where we are now, and into the future, it's phenomenal. Just, I mean, it's just been a treat. So I'm mean, very excited. Question from Doug. Uh, approximately how many performers will be in the parade? 
Uh, the parade has about 76 performers in the parade daily. Can you just talk about the parade a little bit more? What, sure. What should people expect? Um, brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's just from the spectacular LED lights that um, will be displayed throughout each unit. And I think what is um, really interesting and inspiring with this parade is that every person, every float, every part of it um, is a seamless uh, from beginning to end. So everything is um, just a beautiful, spectacular visual sight. It's very bright. <laughs> it's, How similar is this to the uh, Hong Kong one? Um, similar but different, honestly. We developed them both in tandem, and Hong Kong's is open, but Disneyland has, uh, as Tom said, we're not going to share everything today because there are surprises coming. Uh, we did share one on the screen. I don't know if you saw the drum. I did bring the drum back because I felt that was very important. I love that drum, and so you're getting the biggest, coolest drum you probably have ever seen. Uh, and that's what's cool about the parade, really, is that it is stunning in lights. We actually have to turn it down because it's so bright and it's a little overwhelming. And, and a lot of it was, you know, again, how to make it environmental, how to let the floats paint the buildings around you. I mean, there's a lot of stuff built into these. We thought World of Color had a lot of um, technology that we could go and, you know, they call it channels and universes of information. The parade has more universes of information than World of Color. It is insane how smart the floats are, how they interact with the costumes, because everything talks to each other. In a, cause we go, Individual, we, individually, too. Yeah, so we're talking to every single costume around the, their float. So. Everybody has a computer on board. So it's really fun to see how costumes change, and you'll see organically just kind of this beauty paint out uh, across the, the whole parade. So it's it's going to, it'll be, I, I here's the thing. I, really wanted to bring the electrical parade back to Disneyland. That was my big goal. And, and I succeeded, so I'm very happy. <laughs> because it's such a tradition, it's such a wonderful thing, and such, especially a part of my childhood, and many people's childhood. So to have it come down Main Street USA again, you know, for this new generation, but really inspired by the original, because um, it, it, it truly was special. And it just, we're taking it to that next level for today's kids. And, you know, I, it's so interesting because I love working with Steven because he pushes the, pushes the, pushes us all to achieve more. Oh, yeah. And I used to work for Bob Yanni, who was the creator of the original Electric Trade, and he was the same way. He never stopped pushing, never stopped striving to do something great. And I feel like, sort of, wow, I've come full circle and here we are. And so I'm really excited, Steven that we're, uh, we're doing this and that the company allowed us to do this. We're really excited. Speaking of the um, original parade, I remember watching it as a child and it was my absolute favorite thing. So how many of the original floats will actually, I remember the thing that sticks out of my mind is the bugs, like the snails in the parade. So how many of the original floats will be part of the new one? And what about the music? The music was my favorite part, I think, of the parade. So will that be the same, or will it be different? Well, I'll answer the hard question. So there's, other than the drum, we're truly not bringing anything back from the original parade. It's all, I, oh, it's a little sad face. Uh, it's all new stories. Uh, you know, again, we kind of, we paint in a lot of different places because there's, especially for kids of today, you know, we're painting kind of in the new world and a lot of the new stories that they love. You'll see some of the um, older stories coming back too, but we wanted to do something truly fresh. And musically, the Bro Code now is coming back. Uh, it's, it's wild, it's fresh, it's, it's a new take on it, which I think is fun because everybody knows it. So we did demo after demo after demo to really come up with a new way to do it. Even the opening is really great because we bring back the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but now kind of for a, a new way to kind of play it. You will right cry. Here. I cried. Yeah, she did cry. I absolutely cried. I was sobbing in the corner. I was like, why does this, all these memories are going? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. The press release states uh, project, uh, projection mapping. Can you just talk about how people will be able to see the show at uh, It's a Small World, Rivers of America, and uh, I forgot what other thing. Well, can you just talk about that? Well, I've always said the best kept secret for fireworks at Disneyland 
was down at Small World. I used to love to go down there because literally the, the pyrotechnics are above you. But the the uh, now you'll have a chance to go down there and become immersed with these projections, very similar to what you saw uh, tonight uh, down at Small World, all the way down Main Street, on the castle, on the Matterhorn. We're uh, looking into the mist screens over at Fantasmic. So we really want it to envelop, and what's that word again? Immersive? It's immersive. Yeah. It's immersive. We want to make, and what you guys saw was half of Main Street today. And, and it's also a very, very early test, as it, it were. That's all weird little test footage that they wanted to show. And, and it gives you, I mean, it really gives you a glimpse of where we're going to head. I mean, basically mapping means we've come in with very sophisticated devices and we've uh, mapped out the street, every single inch, every single corner. And it takes about a month and they just started. That's why kind of you saw a lot of rust up today. But what's gonna happen is the whole street will totally be um, uh, projected in a crazy way. And even the projectors tonight were temporary just for this. But what's gonna happen is everything's gonna connect to each other. Everything's gonna become a storytelling device in wild new ways. And, and it's really gonna take that music that we love and now it's gonna put you in the middle of it. And that's kind of the goal. And we've, we've just really started this. We've been doing projection shows all around the world. And this is a whole new palette for us. Uh, it's a new one, it's kind of a new way to play it. And the idea is to, to put things all over the park. So if people come here a lot, there's gonna be a whole fun show going on at Small World that will be similar but different than Main Street. So we're gonna tell that story, but we're gonna tell it in different ways. You're gonna see different things happen out there. So we really wanna encourage people to go play around the park. You know, go to Fantasmic, you know, oh, did you see this? This is what happens over there. And there's gonna be stuff hiding everywhere. Because we really, and we just started to touch this, but when you start to see stuff at the end with all the patterning, we can go to every little window. We can have little things happen in windows and open and shut. And we're gonna do all that. It will be painstakingly <laughs> time consuming to do it, but that's what we love, is to really go and make it like a new wow, to make it something, because we can do fireworks. I mean, I could just take all the projection out of the show and do the show as it is. And uh, the finale, which we just got, made everyone cry. And that's my number one thing, is that when you hear the music for the finale, you're, you're, you totally cry. You absolutely do. And I will not tell you the opening, but it is fabulous. It is, it truly is one of the coolest things because I really wanted to bring Walt into this in a big way. And we do that. We go back to the heritage. We talk about Walt. We might or might not see him in the orange groups. Let's just say that. That could be interesting. So there's, I know, show the So we're going to do things that I think will play on many different levels that kind of tell you the history of Disneyland, but in fun ways. And then we're going to launch it into the future, which I think is going to be really, really good. Another question from Doug? We now all know it starts on May 22nd. Uh, how many months will it run, and have you selected a closing date? No. May 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a long celebration. <laughs> Ron, uh, can you handle two mics at one time? Sure. So, is everything done? Everything's planned? You're moving on to your next project, or will there be a lot of tweaking between now and the end of May? We truly just have started. Um, there's uh, a lot of the music tracks are. The demos are finished. Uh, we actually go uh, in a couple weeks to record them over in London. We're going to go back to London and record uh, at Abbey Roads. So the scores are now coming along, and media has started uh, for both shows. So I go in every week with Sarah and the gang and John, and we start to review stuff. And then they will get the systems up and running, and then we'll start rehearsal. So it's, it's an ongoing process to May 21st. <laughs> to make sure that we're done and then we'll open on the 22nd. But no, it's, that's why, because everything, like that's what we keep saying is caveats. Everything you saw out there truly is just the beginning of where we're headed and just the ideas that we're starting to do. And the idea is to keep pushing that forward, going, wow, how do we keep making the wow bigger and bigger and bigger for all the shows, you know, especially World of Color and the fireworks and, you know, what we end up doing finally with Eight the Night. Question back here, and then I think we've got time for one or two more. Can any of you discuss what's going to happen to Sleeping Beauty's Castle and Carthay Circle Theater? 
I mean, how would you describe it? Is it a remodel, a repaint? It's, uh, what's it going to look like? I would almost call it diamondized. It, it's, it, it really, it's, uh, you couldn't really tell from the sketch that was uh, on, in the um, uh, pr presentation, but uh, it's going to look stunning, sparkly. It's, it is our diamond celebration. And when Steve was doing his, pass me some more diamond, it wasn't a, it, that wasn't a uh, uh, fluke because it, 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 there are going to be diamonds, the colors are going to be beautiful. It's a, 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 it's not a complete redo. I mean, you'll know, the, I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. It is a complete redo, but the castle will uh, still keep its look and charm. It will just be overdressed with some beautiful diamondized. Well, it's going to be dazzling. I mean, that's that's really the reason of the tag. Dazzling. It's great. all going to be dazzling with, you know, effects that work in and out of it from day to night. So, they'll be the, I think the icons will be absolutely gorgeous when they're done. And the same thing over at uh, Carthay Circle at the Carthay restaurant over there too. Anyone else? Well, thank you all for coming. And, oh. <laughs> Yeah, and I totally say yes. I mean, it's one of the big things that we're working with um, our partners here at the resort to go. Because there was, there, and I'll just put it out there, there was this big thing about the 50th going, you have to watch it from the hub. And I'm like, oh, we're not doing that again. And that's why I want to put it out there from the beginning. We're going to make the stuff so cool everywhere that you will want to go and see it and have little things hiding here and there to go, wow, and see how many people can guess what we've done and all the different things to all the different stories that we're going to tell. And as you notice, I mean, these are all nine coming adventures, so you're going to have to come back and see, <laughs> in order to see all of them and right. see them different positions. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Wow. And they're all integrated too, which is fun. They didn't show the art. The art really, because no. we didn't show the art. We'll eventually show that. It's it's pretty cool what will happen to it that we have planned. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Okay. We got another, I'm sorry, do we have another question? I haven't heard you say anything about Fantasmic. Is there anything to say about that? Is it still happening? Is it getting as a nighttime spectacular thing? No, I mean, it, it, will, it will be uh, one of our offerings in the evening. So uh, we're not doing you know, a normal thing we do every year with it, sort of refreshing thing, but no. It's, bringing, it's coming back. It'll be running. Um, all through the celebration. <laughs> yeah, really fast on that. So the holiday nighttime shows be taking place during the 60th, there will be 60th all the time. It will, in fact, be 60th all the time. Uh, so uh, when the holidays come around this year, we'll still be doing our diamond celebration. Uh, could you provide us some teasers of what new surprises we <laughs> should <laughs> My best advice for that is to keep following the Disney Parks blog on a daily basis <laughs> because we will be, like, we will be uh, giving you updated information throughout the next few months as we get ready for May 22nd. And on that note, I will thank you all for coming. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, John and Tracy. And um, Steve, am I right that there's going to be a...